Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at simple trigonometric equations so we can answer questions from exercise 10D. Simple trigonometric equations because there are harder trigonometric equations to come still. Now the key thing with trigonometric equations is that generally you get more than one answer and you generate multiple answers through using the graphs. So here we're going to have an equation of sine theta equals 0 0.5 in the interval from 0 to 360. So we want to find all of the values of theta that when we sine theta gives us 0 0.5 as the answer. So previously you'll have seen in maybe year 9, maybe at GCSE, that you do inverse sine of 0 0.5 and you get theta degrees. Now this will only give you one answer. However, when you look at the graph, there are going to be loads of times where your graph comes out to give the value of a half. Let's just plot the first one on. The 30 degree marker will be here. So that's where your 30 degree answer comes from. When you do 30 degrees of sine, you're going to get an answer of 0 0.5. So that's why it appears on the y-axis, because it's the answer to what sine of 30 is. But however, if we look along the red line here in between 0 to 360, which is our domain here, we're going to find another answer here. And what we're going to use is the symmetry on the sine graph here. So notice how we've gone in 30 degrees here. We're going to go back 30 degrees here to 150 to get that solution there. So we actually get two answers for this question here. 30 degrees and 150 degrees and when you put both of those numbers into the sine uh, function you're going to get 0 0.5 out as your answer. So this is how we're going to do trigonometric equations. It's find all of the answers for theta such that sine theta equals 0 0.5. Okay let's have a go at another one then. Solve the equation 5 sine theta equals minus 2 between theta is 0 to 360. So the first thing I do here is definitely divide by the 5. Get rid of anything that's blocking um, your sine here and then do inverse sine. And we're going to get minus 23.6. Now notice how minus 23.6 is nowhere in between 0 to 360. That's not really that use. So this is not going to be one of our final answers. However, it is going to... Um, be useful in generating other answers. Now notice here how because the sine graph repeats itself every 360 degrees we can add on 360 degrees onto our answer here. So if you think about it our graph would have gone backwards and at minus 23.6 we will have got one of the solutions for minus 2 over 5. Now the 360 degree solution will be all the way over here, so that's 336.4. Okay, so we've got one solution here, and what we're going to have to use is the symmetry on the sine graph here. So what we'll have noticed is that we'll have had to have gone back 23.6 degrees to get to this point here. So we're going to need to go upwards 23.6 from the 180 marker. And that will get us to 203.6. So those are our two answers for this equation here. 203.6 and 336.4. So we need to continually use the symmetry of the sine graph here to find solutions and, other, and more than one solution to these trigonometric equations. Let's have another go then. So solve the equation sine theta equals 2 cos theta in between the interval 0 to 360. So uh, it's got two trig functions here. Now one way that I know that I can combine the trig equations of sine and cos here is to do sine divided by cos equals tan. So divide cos by both sides. So sine over cos equals 2 and then change the sine divided by cos into a tan. So it's now tan of theta equals 2. So then what you do is you do the inverse tan on your calculator to get 63.4, and then draw the, sin, the tan graph sorry, in between 0 to 360. So you're drawing the tan graph here between 0 to 360. 
So notice here that when tan is 2, so notice that whatever you get on the other side of your equals sign from your trig function needs to go on the y-axis here. That's going to be effectively the result of whatever we're tanning. So tan, of t tan minus 1 of 2 is 63.4. So that was our first solution, 63.4. Now with tan, there's no symmetry to tan. There is, however, just a repetition every 180 degrees. So the next solution that we're going to get is just add on 180 degrees and we'll get 243.4. If you were to add 180 degrees again, you'd get a value that was outside of 0 to 360. So ineffectively, you could get infinitely many solutions here. However, we've just set up our questions so that we need all of the answers in between 0 to 360. So it's just two answers here, 63.4 and 243.4. OK then, so two sets of questions for you to have a go at here. It's really important uh, trigonometry in A-level maths. So that's why I'm setting you so many questions. For this question set here, pause the video and try your best. Right, okay, well done for having a go at these questions here. Solve cos theta equals a half for 0 to 360 degrees. So the first thing I would do here is cos minus 1 of a half. And from the video I learned earlier, I get a value of 60 degrees here. Now, what we need to now do to get the second or possibly third or fourth solution is look at our graph in between 0 to 360. It's going to look something like this, 90 here, 180 here, 270 here, and 360 here. A rough graph is all that's required. Look how quick I did that. That's all you need. So we've got a marker at 0.5 on the y-axis, and we get our solution of 60 degrees here. However, if we continue that marker going and find other angles that will give me a value of a half, I'm going to get another solution here. So we could do this a couple of ways. Either we can go forwards from 60, in which case we need to come back from 360, or we work out the difference between the intersection points with the x-axis is 30, and then go forwards 30 from 270. In either case, we're going to get x, or theta, sorry, is equal to 60 degrees. I'm going to come backwards, so this is going to be add 60, this is going to be subtract 60, 360 take away 60 is 300 degrees. So those are my two answers here to solve this equation. The second question here is 2 sine theta minus 3 cos theta equals 0. Now the first thing I'd do is I'd probably move the, and just rearrange a little bit here before I attempt to solve, move the 3 cos theta onto the other side. Now, the way that I can combine a sine and a cos into a single trig function here is to divide by cos, in which case I then get 2 sine theta over cos theta. And dividing both sides by cos, I'm ended up with a 3 on the right. What I'm now going to do is divide through by 2 to get rid of the 2 next to the sine. So I get here 1.5. And now what I need to do is change this sine theta over cos theta into a tan theta. So tan theta of 1.5, or tan theta equals 1.5 here. So now the next thing I need to do is do tan minus 1 of 1.5. And I don't know the answer to that. I'll have to grab my calculator and I get 56.3 degrees. Now, I need to find all of the answers that are in between 0 to 360. So looking at a graph of tan, I get a little squiggle here, asymptote at 90 degrees, another squiggle here, asymptote at 270 degrees, and another squiggle here, finishing at 360 on this axis here. My first answer for 1.5 gave me a value of 56.3. And if I carry that line on and down, I'm going to get to another solution here. Now, what I'm going to do here is from the 180 marker, uh, no, effectively, what I can do here is because tan repeats itself every 180 degrees, 
I'm going to also get an answer that's 56.3 add 180 degrees. So adding on 180, and I get 236.3 degrees. So tan is probably the easiest graph to work with, just because you have to just add on 180 each time to get your next answer. Okay, there's a second set of questions here as well. Pause the video and have a go at these two. Right, so well done for having a go at these two questions here. So the first question here is 2 sine theta equals minus 0 0.3. The first thing I would do here is divide by the 2 here. So sine of x equals minus 0 0.15. Now the next thing I need to do is do inverse sine of negative 0 0.15 and here I get minus 8.63 degrees. And I need to find all the x values that are in between theta is minus 180 and 180. I do apologise for the theta and x mix up here. Now the sine graph in between these ranges here is going to be this and this. So at minus 0 0.15 I'm going to get my first solution at this point here of minus 8.63. I'll just put in some markers here so I can understand my graph. And the next marker I'm going to find at minus 0 0.15 is all the way over here. So using a bit of symmetry on this graph here I'm going to do minus 180 add my answer here. So minus 180 add on my answer is going to be minus 171.43 or 33 rather 37 okay so these are my two solutions for this equation here notice how I'm not going to get any positive solutions because my sine graph is only positive in between 0 to 180 here so my answers here are minus 8.6, we'll round it to one decimal place, and minus 171.5, sorry, 4 to um, one decimal place. Let's have a go at question 7 as well. So two students attempt to solve 2 cos x equals 3 sine x for minus 180 to 180 degrees. Identify their mistake. So the first thing this student does here is creates a tan x equals uh, 3 over 2. So they've obviously divided by cos and divided by the 3. They've got this the other way around. The student A um, has got 3 over 2 rather than uh, 2 over 3. Okay, student B here has uh, squared both sides to start with, um, which is probably their mistake. You should not square both sides. should not square both sides. Now, why shouldn't you square both sides? Allow me to explain. Let's say we set up the equation 2x equals 4, and we square both sides. 4x equals 16, 4x squared equals 16, whoops. So therefore x squared equals 4. So therefore x equals plus or minus 2. Notice here how I've now got more solutions than I would have had at my initial equation here of 2x equals 4. So I've generated too many solutions here uh, for this answer. Okay, so that's how student A and student B have mistaken their, uh, their question here. Right, okay, thanks very much for watching. Um, have a go then at questions from exercise 10D. Make sure you have lots of practice at these simple trigonometric equations because there's going to be a harder trigonometric uh, equations video coming up soon. Thanks very much for watching.